This one's been requested quite a few times, so today I'm going to look at the question, do we, and indeed all animals, have a predestined set number of heartbeats in our lifetime? I was surprised how many people believe this, but actually it's rooted in a bit of truth. The magic number is supposed to be one billion heartbeats in a lifetime. So let's do a quick bit of mental arithmetic. A human might have a heart rate of about 60, which is 86,000 beats per day, which is 32 million beats per year. So that means a typical human should live for 32 years and then die. Wait a second. Ah, fuck. I'd like to go to the gym, you know, but um, we've only got a set number of heartbeats, so uh, don't want to use them up. You get me? That's not how the force works. The idea that we have a set number of heartbeats can first be traced back to ancient Buddhist and Hindu philosophy that suggested that all living things have a predetermined time on Earth. Now, clearly we know that isn't true. There are studies dating back decades which show that there are certain things you can do to make your life longer. For example, most people alive today are going to die of cardiovascular disease or cancer, and both of these things have modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Modifiable risk factors are things like exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy weight, not smoking, keeping an eye on your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your blood sugar, all of these things will make you live longer. Non-modifiable risk factors are things like age and family history, so don't get old and choose your parents carefully. So where does this figure of one billion come from? Well, if you rewind a few thousand years to a time before humans started improving their living conditions and we had a life expectancy of around 30, you can then compare us to animals having taken those modifiable risk factors out of the equation. After all, prehistoric man nor animals are well known for their addiction to McDonald's. And then you'll find that rule is remarkably accurate. I was giving a talk at the Science Museum here in London earlier this year and I took along two hearts. A mouse heart, donated kindly by one of my research colleagues, and a cow heart from the butcher. Now, a mouse and a cow are vastly different in size. The cow heart was 2,000 times heavier than the mouse heart. But whereas a mouse might live for two years, a cow could live for 22 years. Well, not that cow. However, because a mouse's heart rate is 800 beats a minute, and a cow's is more like 70 beats a minute, in their entire lifetime they actually have fairly comparable number of heartbeats. If you scale this up further to something like a whale, then you'll find that the rule still holds true. Indeed, many people have looked into this and generated some lovely curves showing that as heart rate decreases, lifespan increases. But why is this? Well, the first idea, which seems intuitive, is that heart rate is a reflection of metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate is how much energy you use per unit of time per unit of mass. For example, joules per hour per kilogram, or a permutation thereof. So we need to figure out why different animals have different metabolic rates. Well, you've eaten some hot pie, right? So you already know the answer. Oh, you want me to explain it? As we all know, if you cut a pie into small pieces, they cool down much faster than one big pie. Small things lose heat far more rapidly than big things, as they have more surface area per volume. So mice need to generate way more heat, otherwise they would die of cold. You can see this from the amount of food each animal eats. A mouse consumes about a third of its body weight per day, whereas a cow only 2%. If we ate the same proportion as a mouse, it would be the equivalent of eating about 30 pies a day. This man paid till he burst. Therefore, although mousey cells and cow cells are fairly similar, the mouse mitochondria in each cell is producing more heat. This is the rate of living theory that suggests that metabolic rate is inversely proportional to lifespan. It was first proposed in 1908, and although it's an elegant application of thermodynamics to living things, it's essentially been debunked because, at the end of the day, this isn't physics. It's actually complicated. Yes, in biology, things are rarely as simple as a rule of thumb can predict. And ultimately, there's no clear relationship between basal metabolic rate and life expectancy. For example, there are other reasons that uh, small animals might have shorter lives. They're more vulnerable to predators, so evolution might have resulted in a situation where they reach sexual maturity much more quickly uh, before they're eaten. Okay, so we've explained why different animals have different metabolic rates, but we still haven't uh, found a link between heart rate and life expectancy. Um, the simple but complicated answer is probably aging. Here's a pro tip. I start pretty much any talk at a conference or university with, well, the thing is with 
insert literally any subject, is that we don't really understand it. And then A, people think you're way more knowledgeable than you actually are because you can afford to be so humble. And B, they're more forgiving when your talk is an incoherent rambling mess because you did your slides at 3 a.m. the night before. Hypothetically, you understand. Well, the thing with aging is that nobody really understands it. One theory is that mitochondria are intrinsic to the way cells age and eventually die. And they might act as regulators of the pathways that control aging. The mitochondrial free radical theory suggests that oxygen free radicals are generated at the level of the respiratory electron transport chain, the process by which your mitochondria make ATP, the energy that powers everything you do. And reactive oxygen species cause oxidative damage. Therefore, the fact that mouse mitochondria are more active and producing more energy might translate into the mouse literally aging faster than the cow. We see mitochondrial DNA mutations in older mammals. A deficiency in the electron transport chain in certain cell types like heart cells, skeletal muscle or neurons is also seen in elderly humans. Now, let's not commit the cardinal sin of inferring causality when what we're seeing is correlation, but nevertheless, it's interesting stuff. However, it's one of about 12 theories of aging. Perhaps all of them play a role. An interesting tangent here is the effect of cold. Some of the longest living organisms on Earth are found in icy waters, from Greenland sharks, which may be 400 years old, to 11,000 year old sponges. An extreme example of cold stopping the clock is the wood frog that you've met on this channel before, which freezes solid for several months. But a lot of this life is poikilothermic, i.e. its body temperature varies according to the environment around it. But we're homeothermic or warm-blooded, so does any of this apply to us? We use hypothermia in medicine all the time. Donated organs are transported on ice to prevent damage. Its use in surgery has gone in and out of fashion over the years, like cardiac surgery, where uh, occasionally a patient is cooled profoundly to 18 degrees Celsius to effectively suspend a lot of metabolic processes, rendering them in a state that is virtually indistinguishable from death. Mice that had their core body temperature reduced just 0.3 degrees Celsius lived longer, to the tune of 12% for males and 20% for females. If you've even got a passing interest in science, you'll have met this handsome critter before, the naked mole rat. Along with their other magical superpowers, naked mole rats live for 30 years, in contrast to similarly sized rodent cousins who live for about two or three years. Their core body temperature is also three to five degrees Celsius lower. Hypothermia can alter a plethora of cellular pathways, resulting in less inflammation, fewer cells dying, and an increase in anti-apoptotic or trophic factors. Cold shock proteins are proteins that are upregulated in bacteria in response to cold and have been known about for a long time. There are similar families of proteins that are increased in human cells in response to cold, but at present, we don't really know what that means. They appear to have a role in preventing cell death, and that has led to them being the foundation for things like ice baths after training, or the expensive and fashionable cryotherapy. As is often my message on this channel, don't believe the hype. Heart rate, we do know, is correlated to body temperature hypothermic patients have slower heart rates. But that's normally talked about in pathological hypothermia, when somebody's been exposed to the elements all night or something like that. But temperature, normal temperature, is a range. It's typically described as something like 36.1 to 37.2 or 3 degrees Celsius. So it's possible that people who have a slower heart rate might be ever so slightly colder, but still within that normal range. So how does this affect you? Well, Recently, I was asked to help with an AI project for the British Medical Journal cataloguing their cardiology journal, which is called Heart. So I was looking at uh, old papers and I came across this Danish study, which looked at 3000 men followed up over 16 years, which is quite a long time for a medical study. And what it found is that heart rate is an independent predictor of life expectancy, irrespective of your level of fitness as measured on a test, the amount of exercise you do as part of your daily routine, or your cardiovascular risk factors. And it's not because there's something magical about heart rate, it's because a low heart rate is reflective of a good state of physical fitness. There are two natural ways you can reduce your heart rate. The first is not advisable. Short of doping with thyroid medication, please don't do that, or sleeping in the freezer, please don't.
Well, I guess if it was quite comfy, no, please don't sleep in the freezer. There's really no way you can reduce your natural core body temperature, but we can exercise to bring our heart rate down. So get out there, stay active and see how low you can go. Tell us in the comments below your lowest resting heart rate and uh, the winner gets a free pacemaker. Now I'm off to the work Christmas party where I propose demonstrating to my work colleagues the importance of exercise by destroying them on the dance floor.